Welcome back to Royalty Now, where we bring you face to face with figures from the past. Today's subject is Richard III, the infamous King of England who is thought to have murdered his nephews to take the crown of England for himself. Since his death in 1485, his image has progressively gotten worse and worse, with his enemies exaggerating his flaws, turning him into a hunchback monster. But was this real or was this all propaganda? You can watch the full video about Richard III linked here and down below. But today we're going to be talking about the face of Richard III and the princes in the tower. So what did they really look like? I wanted to make a recreation of Richard, who we have much more information on. But I also wanted to give the boys a face, even though source material for their appearances is next to none. So let's start with Richard. There are no portraits of Richard surviving today that were made in his own lifetime. But unlike the princes, researchers have located the lost body of Richard III, which allows us to get a glimpse of the real man that we just don't get with other monarchs. Philippa Langley is a member of the Richard III Society and the main driving force behind the amazing discovery of Richard's body under a parking lot in Leicester in 2012. This allowed researchers to learn more about Richard's true appearance and settle some long-held disputes. Through genetic analysis, the University of Leicester team determined that he had a 96% chance of having blue eyes and a 77% chance of having blonde hair, at least in his childhood. This allowed them to tell which portrait of Richard was the most accurate, and it seems to be this earliest version found. This arched portrait made about 30 to 40 years after his death shows Richard with light eyes and medium brown hair. Before the discovery of his body, part of Richard's legacy had been that he was an evil hunchback with a withered arm. This was mostly spread by Thomas More, who was only eight years old when Richard died. Thomas More worked for the Tudors, so he was a pretty biased source who had a vested interest in making the Tudor line look more secure. Now the researchers found that Richard did have pretty severe scoliosis. In real life, this would cause a slight asymmetry, with the left shoulder being held higher than the right. And you can see that a little bit in this portrait. Contemporary accounts from Richard's reign do mention a slight shoulder abnormality, which makes sense, but nothing so severe that would make him an obvious hunchback with a withered arm or any of these rumors that were spread after his death. The researchers also found that his bones were quite delicate, which matches up with contemporary accounts that he was rather a small man who was surprisingly good in battle despite appearing feminine, in their words. On the skeleton, there are eight minor wounds from various weapons and two fatal blows at the base of the skull, which aligns with the accounts that he died in the middle of a group of attackers. Cranial facial expert Caroline Wilkinson worked on a 3D model of Richard III, which I'll also reference in my recreation. In my depiction, I'm going to try to kind of thread the needle between the most accurate portrait and the forensic reconstruction, since the two do have some differences. Now, let's talk about the princes, and this is of course where it gets more difficult. For a young Edward V, we do have one likeness, this one from an illuminated manuscript translated by Edward's uncle, Anthony Woodville. There's also this stained glass depiction, but it was made after Edward's death in the 1500s. And of course, there are numerous depictions and portraits from centuries much later. So what we do know is this. Edward V was a blonde boy of 12. And that's about it. It's reasonable to guess that his younger brother Richard, who was nine at the time, might look similar to him. I've made a fully artistic depiction of the boys based on the single portrait we have as well as the features of their relatives. I've essentially borrowed some features from each parent. So while Richard III's recreation is fully grounded in reality, the recreations of the boys are just artistic and meant to honor their memory. So let's take a look at Richard III and the princes in the tower now.
Thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you for the next video.